If you've ever been on the internet, which you should have considering you are literally online right now, and you're into horror games, then you should know about the game Iron Lung. And if you haven't, well, sucks to be you, I guess. Iron Lung is a game that came out in March of 2022, centering around your jolly or merry expedition in the Blood Moons, known as AT5 and Z8. The main story summarised is, all humans and planets went kapoofy woofy and straight up vanished faster than my father when I was born, and only those aboard satellites and spacecrafts remained alive. This event was known as the Quiet Rapture. You are a prisoner of one of these spaceships and are tasked to explore the Blood Moons in the SM-13, a rundown rusted vessel created for the use of documenting the depths and findings inside of the Blood Oceans, in return for your freedom. The game is very simple in its mechanics, but the tension and overall atmosphere is what lent itself to be such a captivating game during its time of release. Now, Voyager 19 is a game very similar to Iron Lung in its mechanics. You are also tasked with a mission that your very kind and considerate self has agreed to. Most likely against your will and at gunpoint, This mission is to search for habitable planets in the Okrulu sector, but your real mission is to figure out what happened to the Magella science expedition that went missing there. The public is unaware that they deviated from their original course and cut communications. We need to know what happened before it gets publicised. We provided you a Voyager 19 series spacecraft. It's basic, but has hibernation technology and fractional light speed capable engines. The electronics are the main limitation. Radiation will degrade them on interstellar flights, but they will remain for the seven missions we've commissioned you for. You awake in your ship, attached to a set of tubes by Lux. Their purpose is unknown right now, but in front of you awaits a computer. Milnius OS, which seems to be the equivalent of Windows 11 in space. Your on-screen options are the missions, the ship's navigation, all the ship's sensors provided, your ship's power usage and distribution, and the files where you can hide your secret homework folder which reaches 100GB of space. Now if we check the mission tab, we are tasked with photographing and recording planets like professional YouTubers. And well, that's it. Simple enough. Game of the year. <laughs> In the files, there is nothing except some mission info which we will read later because I want to play the game. The mission info reads. And that's all we get in regard to the mission's info. Good enough, I guess. So now, the five tabs on the computer. The power section shows the power able to be distributed and lucky for us, we have the perfect amount to power the entire ship for years to come. Insert extreme sarcasm. With the ability to power all of our necessities, such as the ship's navigation, thrusters, cameras, radio and life support. I recommend turning that off by the way, seems pretty useless to me. Next up is our sensors page. Here we are able to record our audio and take photos presumably of the planets we're meant to locate. And finally the navigation page where we <laughs> navigate. The cosmos in search for celestial bodies the size of your mother. The first star which was right in front of me and I completely missed it somehow that you can visit is AX0. A star which is very reminiscent of our own sun with a yellow orangish colour with white spots dotted around its surface. With every planet or star you find, you can record an audio sample of what the celestial bodies sound like. This is a real thing that you can do with something known as sonification technology, but that's all complicated stuff which you can research yourself in your own time if you are interested. AX Zero's appearance which closely resembles the sun also emits a sound that is similar to our sun. For clarification, I will not be showing every single audio sample and won't be showing every planet, but only the samples I found interesting and felt the need to mention. To save costs of time and explaining every single planet, and to save the video from becoming very boring and repetitive. Okay, back to the video. 
As I was saying, AX0 produces a sound sample that is very reminiscent of our sun, such as this. To me, it sounds like a pulsing drone or something. I'll leave you to decide. After you have reached and documented AX0, you can travel to AX1 to 3. AX3 I found rather interesting, as the planet looks incredibly like our moon, with the planet having these darker, splotchy looking areas. These darker sections are typically caused through impacts or asteroid collisions, or even better, when that one rat got sent to the moon. We are sending the first rat to the moon, boys. <laughs> AX3's audio sample is also interesting. Instead of being similar to drones and like the shit we heard a minute ago. Instead of being similar to droning sounds, it sounds more digitalized and has these almost computer-like beeping sound effects. Finally, after all the planets and stars have been documented and recorded, you can now call Line 6 off of work for 3 years until you are brought back to life like it's Black Ops Zombies, Kino de Totem. We tired of playing with your ass! Say goodnight, motherfucker! Wake up. Time for you to come out of your snooze fest and get back to work, you lazy bastard. Once more, we have to power all the ship's tools back on, except for the life support, like I said, we don't really need that. Mission 2 is very much the same as Mission 1 as it serves the main walkthrough and opening guide to the game's mechanics. But some of the stars make you have to look at planets on a certain angle, adding some difficulty to the game. So as always, navigate to the moons, record and document photos, go to sleep after mission is complete. Job's a good one. Welcome to night three at Voyager 19. <laughs> okay, for our friends over, my bad. Mission three of the game is the same, so that's ten on the power. Oh. Who the fuck stole our power? <laughs> so, mission three is where the game hits you with sneaky problems, such as not being able to power your ship entirely. You may be thinking, what does this mean? Am I going to die? In which case, yes, your entire ship is now about to explode. <laughs> Even though we are handicapped with a reduction of our ship's power, the game still runs the same. Travel to the planets in the local area, take photos and record, but remember to switch out the power for individual purposes, such as the radio and camera. Until you notice, not everything we are visiting is a planet. The thing we have been tasked of finding, the Magella Science Expedition, or the Magella Vessel, as according to navigation, is here. So let's shower to it and help the crew and alongside that aid the expedition into completion. Your ship gets hit with a micrometeorite, but considering how much the ship swayed and shook from the collision, you'd think we'd been hit by a space-bearing Discord moderator. The collision disabled all the power on the ship, and you must turn it back on to carry on the travel. And finally you arrive at your destination, and you must take a photo of the ship to let us know you have found the crew in one piece. Okay, many pieces. The Magella vessel is in ruins, in pieces. There is no clear indication of what could be the culprit. Maybe an asteroid, possibly just like the one that hit us, but with nothing else to do, we can record the audio sample. However, this isn't a sample. If you can see there, at the bottom left, we are being transferred some information. Four encrypted files. The Magella ship log, a journal entry, a chat log, and an encrypted file. File 7258 underscore 2. Each file can be decrypted, but there is a timer on how long it will take to be decrypted. And in this case, it's going to take three years. These guys are running on some 1980s Wi-Fi because holy fuck, that is slow. Ah! But with nothing else left to do, we end our mission and enter hibernation for one more time and awake years in the future. Oh, no.
successfully detected the human system LK exploration target planet LK2 potentially habitable does not exist. Report error in astronomical data to exploration committee. The name of the planetary area we are in is known as the PL Solar System. I'm, I'm going to call it a solar system as they are orbiting a star, so technically it is a solar system. But the PL Solar System is where things in the game start to become a little more obscure and mysterious. Overall, things look pretty normal, but there is a planet that caught my eye. PL2 is a planet, I'm saying this with heavy quotation marks here, because whilst on navigation it may come across as to be a planet, but on camera if we take a photo, we get this. I don't know how to describe it, but it kind of looks mechanical, but also like cheese? A really large and grey space cheese. <laughs> it has these large see-through holes embedded into it, making the planet seem practically hollow and actually not made up of anything. For those who don't know, for planets to exist there needs to be a gravitational field keeping it held together. So because space is a vacuum, without any kind of gravity a planet would just kind of float into pieces when in orbit of a star. Which is obviously not great. But PL2 is hollow. How and why is it still spherical? What is keeping it together? Unless it's not actually a planet and something man made. PL2 does look mechanical in nature, so maybe it wasn't made naturally. Maybe it's something from an extraterrestrial species, but we don't know. Anyways, we take the photos, record our audio sample, and then head back to sleep at our 8pm bedtime because we have to wake up early in a century worth of time later. Insert a sleeping cat or something, I, I don't know. This is file 7258 underscore 2 and it details how snapping turtles imitate and mimic worms to capture prey. What this means in terms of relevance to the story is at the moment unknown and probably may stay that way but for now let's just keep up with the missions. Mission 5 puts us in the ZW solar system, a solar system with only two planets to explore and a single star. ZW0 looks very much like our sun and emits a strange pulsing much like the star we last compared. ZW1 is a moon in my opinion. It's smaller in size compared to navigation, with a striking resemblance to our moon, like one of the past moons we looked at. Our next planet is ZW2, a very pretty planet with these oceanic blues and striking turquoise patterns and... its appearance dotted and separated into sections by faint lines. Is it mechanical? It, it can't be. Planets don't have hearts, but why do we hear it beating, pulsing, living? This moon, planet, whatever it is, is not named and never gets real to have a name. It just sits existing, alone in the darkness, beating. Mission 6 takes place in the time period I don't fucking know.
Our monitor is starting to look like an abstract artwork and hey, would you look at that? We can read another file now. The journal log reads as follows. Certain physical principles hold true across massive size differences and create illusions of similarity. A cell looks like a Stein supernova. Our eyes like a nebula. What if these similarities apply to life at different scales as well? Feel free to interpret this as anything you can because frankly I can't. If you have ideas, I'd be more than happy to hear them in the comments, but no pressure. I know we all get stage fright sometimes. I'm not gonna force you to write anything. Without further ado, it's time to turn on the power for the ship and well, fuck. It seems our lovely government is now rationing our power supply considering we can't even power the camera or radio. As the mission progresses, everything is mostly the same. Photographing stars, travelling at high speeds across the vastness of space. When, when it comes to space, life is exceedingly uncommon, as we have slowly found out as humanity. We are but a small speck in the work of an ever-expanding universe. Yet, we seem to be the only group of intelligent life forms. No aliens, no galactic infrastructure, no sight of anything extraterrestrial. This is FD2, a planet with a strange colour scheme very unique to what we have seen. It's spotted, almost. But these aren't craters by what we can tell by visual analysis. So what is it? This is the audio recording sample for FD2. This planet or moon is not a planet or anything close to one. It's alive. A slow, unnerving heartbeat, echoing in the plains of empty space, alone. And raises more questions than answers to revelations we will just never be able to make sense of. What is FD2? How is it alive? And why is it here? Changed our course and disabled the comm system. Right. So the committee can't remotely override our route when they find out. This is dangerous. The ship is designed to last at least 60 years, but with the route he wants, we'll be out here for almost a hundred. Mission 7, the final mission before we can travel home. I'm going to quickly speed run through this because nothing too eventful happens. So I'll give you a brief description in Mission 7. Three more planets or moons can be located, these being SC1, SC2 and SC3. Some sharing the same appearance as FD2 from the last mission. These planets are becoming increasingly more populated and confusing. The same colours, the same sounds, the same questions. But to no real avail of a genuine answer. Now SC1 and SC2 are very much the same as FD2. Same complete pattern, same size, exact same heartbeat. It's increasingly unnatural and worrying on where these are coming from, what they want and why they are appearing more frequently. For now, let's photograph and document the last planet and get the hell out and back home. And hopefully our bosses can provide information on the topic. Just one more planet left to scan and record, and... It's us. It's us. F. Or maybe something that just looks like it. The recording shows a heartbeat, faster, quicker. And with nothing else to do, we try to leave, but the impact has rendered our engine inoperable and unresponsive. We will not be moving anytime soon. With no more solutions, we take a glance back at SC3. And... Thank you. 
craft has failed to establish communications. Losses cannot be hidden from the public any longer. Recommend waiting until the election cycle is over to announce. SC3 was a fake, a sentient being, a mimic. Swallowing us, swallowing us whole without a single shred of remorse and not leaving even a thread of evidence to shed light on where the occupant of Voyage 19 ended up. All hope to save them is impossible. An SC3 awaits its next victim in a sea of dark nothingness. The encrypted file, file 7258 underscore 2, was a reference to SC3, a snapping turtle, mimicking its tongue, its mouth, as a planet. And as you approached, it grabbed a firm hold of you, reeling you in against your will, deceit, and one giant predator hiding in plain sight. I want to draw your attention to the Magella space vessel we located earlier in Mission 3. It was broken, mangled, and wrecked, and in ruin. If the Magella vessel encountered SC-3, then we know for certain we shared the same fate as those unfortunate souls on board of the ship. We have no hope in saving them, and there was no hope in escaping if we tried our hardest. We were prey to a predator, and we joined the food chain. Now, Voyager 19 is an amazing little horror game and I highly, highly recommend playing it yourself for the full experience. The way it builds the tension is really eerie, and the game's controls are very straightforward, making it easy to understand and become very accustomed to very early on. It's a very similar game to Iron Lung, and these little games are the ones I love playing. The games I love to investigate deep into. 10 out of 10 game, I completely recommend it with open arms.